Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to graph quadratic functions that are in intercept form. So we've looked at, in previous videos, other forms that quadratic functions can be written in. Standard form, for example, vertex form, and a couple other various forms. So I'll link those videos in the description below. Here we're going to talk about intercept form. And basically intercept form is a polynomial that's in factored form. So we also did previous videos on how to factor polynomials and kind of what that looks like. So I'll put a card on that in the top right hand corner of the video. Basically what we're looking at here, the x-intercepts are p and q. So that's just the variables that we use. So if we look back here at the top, here is our in intercept form equation. So f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q. So it's called factored form because we have those two factors, x minus p, and we're multiplying by x minus q. So p and q are the intercepts. And if you notice, p and q, it's going to look opposite of, of what is what it says in the equation. For example, if we have x minus 2, p is 2. Okay, if we have x plus 3, q is negative 3. Because if we have x minus and we plug in a negative number, minus a negative becomes a positive. So we'll look at that in the examples below. The axis of symmetry is located halfway between p and q because if those are both x-intercepts, then they are the exact same distance away from the axis of symmetry because both sides of our parabola are symmetrical. And then a is going to tell us if the graph opens up or down. So if we have a negative value for a, our graph will open down. If we have a positive value for a, our parabola will open up. So we have this diagram here at the bottom to kind of show a couple of those things. So our intercepts are right here, p comma zero and q comma zero. So that's basically what is x when y is zero, and that's what an x-intercept is. Then we have our dashed line, vertical line, cutting right through the vertex. That's the axis of symmetry. And we get that by doing p plus q and dividing by two. Basically, it's halfway between the two x-intercepts. So let's look at a couple examples. Example, example number one says graph f of x equals negative x plus one times x minus three. So this is already in factored form or it's in intercept form. So we can go ahead and say x plus one equals zero, so x equals negative one. So one of our x-intercepts is at negative one, zero. So we can plot that right here. And we also have x minus three equals zero, so x is equal to three. So our other x-intercept is one, two, three, and zero. So now that's the two parts of our parabola. We look at this negative right here, and we know that our parabola is going to open down, so it's going to look something like that. And now we can find the axis of symmetry because it's located halfway between those two points. So if we do negative 1 plus 3 and then divide by 2, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and we get 1. Okay, so this is x equals 1, which would be this vertical line right here. So I'll make it a dashed line because it is our axis of symmetry. And now in order to find our vertex, we know that the x-coordinate is 1 because that's the x value that we got from our axis of symmetry. So then we can just plug 1 into our original equation for x. So now we're going to have the f of 1, which is equal to negative 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 3. So this would be negative 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So negative and then 2 times negative 4 would be, excuse me, 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4, and the opposite of negative 4 would be 4. So our vertex now is at 1 comma 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, we can plot that, and now we can draw our sides of our parabola, okay? So now we check, it's opening down, that's what we saw from the negative sign, and it looks good, okay? So that's how we graph one that's already in intercept form. So let's say we wanted to graph in a quadratic that looks like this, that's in the form ax squared plus c. We've done a video on this before, it's in the top right hand corner right now, and we've talked about how to do that one way. So here's another way. We could actually, if it is factorable, we can factor this and graph it using its intercepts. So here's how we would do that. If you notice, this is not in factored form. There's no parentheses, there's no multiplication going on here, so we have to factor it. So what we notice is we can factor out a 3. So if I factor out this 3, now we have x squared minus 1, right? We pulled out that 3. And I see x squared minus 1, and that is the difference of two squares. So that's going to factor as x plus 1 times x minus 1, okay? Now, once we look at that, we can see, okay, this is f of x equals 3 times x plus 1, 
and x minus 1. So now we can find our intercepts. We're going to set them equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 1. And x minus 1 equals 0, so we get x equals positive 1. So now we have these two points, negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. Those are our x-intercepts. Well, halfway between those two would be our axis of symmetry, and that is just the y-axis. Okay, so if you've seen the previous video on ax squared plus c, this should make sense because this minus 3 right here is just a vertical translation, 3 units down. So now we know that the x-coordinate of our vertex, so our axis we just found, is x equals 0. So we know our vertex is 0 comma something. And we're going to plug 0 in to our original equation. So if we do that, we do 3 times 0 squared minus 3. This becomes 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. So now we have 0, 1, 2, 3. And we have our parabola. Okay. So we know it's opening up because a was 3, which is a positive number. And so that's how you graph quadratics in intercept form.